Aside from Mike Trout, I feel like the one right-handed hitter that you should never upset is Nelson Cruz. Look at this pitch yesterday from Kyle Wright. A nasty slider on the outside part of the plate, and he made Nelson Cruz look silly. And I feel like Nelson took that personally because in his very next at-bat, he hit this baseball an estimated 426 feet. But honestly, there was so much rage behind it, in my opinion, that if you would have told me that traveled 585 feet... I would fully believe you. But what's going on everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap spring training edition. We are officially less than 10 days away from opening day. I cannot be more excited. We have a lot to talk about today so the intro is not going to be very long. I will say though if this is your first time on the channel or you're watching these every so often and you want to stay up to date with the game of baseball hit that subscribe button because we're on the road to 300k before opening day. We have Jose Altuve and the Astros having a triple play turned against them. We have Didi Gregorius homering against his former team, the New York Yankees. And then we have Zach Gallen, a pitcher going down with an injury. This is going to be the title of today's video. Something has to be corrected. Something has to be done because I am tired of seeing pitchers hit. I know that it's a very touchy subject and a lot of people are on one side or the other, but we're going to talk about the universal DH today because it has to be said. It's got to be a thing. Okay. I'm tired of seeing pitchers get injured while hitting. Now, speaking of injuries, one of the best pitchers from the 2020 season, season, Denison Lamette. He is making his spring debut after missing all of the 2020 playoffs. I was so upset because he was electric just a season ago, and I wish that he would have been able to play against the Dodgers. That would have been a lot of fun. And then also Brent Honeywell Jr. is coming back after four elbow surgeries. He was the 14th top ranked prospect back in 2018. And I believe that it's been 1,281 days since he's pitched in a professional game. So it's awesome to see Lamette back in baseball and also Honeywell. I'm hoping that these guys can bounce back and stay healthy. Michael Chavis and Bobby Dahlback are torching baseballs right now. They are insane. If you take both of their home run totals combined in spring, they're up to 12. The entire Houston Astros franchise for all of spring training has a combined 12 home runs. And we're not even factoring in Christian Arroyo, who has three bombs, eight RBIs, a 1,000 plus OPS. The Red Sox hitters are on fire. Even their second baseman, I can't remember his name, Jonathan Araz or something crazy like that. He has been raking. Could you imagine if the Red Sox made a push for the playoffs in 2021 when Everyone and their mother has already written them off. Like, imagine if Chris Hale comes back in the midpoint and he's healthy and Erod is healthy and Nathan Evaldi has a bounce back year. Maybe we're underrating the Red Sox because Bobby Dahlbeck and Michael Chavis, they're about to erupt in 2021. I'm thinking that Dahlbeck is about to hit 40 home runs. Now, because we brought up the Astros and the fact that they only have 12 home runs the entire spring training, I want to go ahead and show a triple play. This came off the bat of Jose Altuve. It was not the most exciting triple play, but every time it happens, I want to show you guys and especially it was a little bit sweeter because it came against the Astros and Jose Altuve take that are you guys still upset by what the Astros did in 2017? Like, should we even keep talking about that? Is it kind of old news or are we going to keep that in the back of our head always? I'm actually curious what you guys have to say about that. Let me know in the comment section down below because to me, I'm not forgetting it anytime soon. D.D. Gregorius hit a bomb off his former team, and he actually got some cheers for it, which is super funny. A lot of New York fans either love D.D. Gregorius or they hate him. I felt like he actually had filled in the hole left behind by Jeter fairly well. He was great in the playoffs, and honestly, he played a pretty good shortstop. Now, sticking with the Phillies, I wanted to talk about Aaron Nola, because he struck out nine hitters in just six innings. The Phillies are going to really need him to be an ace, and not just their ace, one of the top five pitchers in the National League if they even want to sniff the playoffs. I don't know why I keep butchering this guy's name, but I can't seem to get it right. I hear Sandy Alcantara, and then I hear other people saying Sandy Alcantara. So let me know in the comment section how the heck do you pronounce it. But so far through spring training, he has been nasty. He had four and two-third innings pitched yesterday with five strikeouts, so he is now in the number one spot for all of strikeouts. And in second place, we have Trevor Bauer, who was dialed in for the first four innings. This pitch right here is sorcery. I don't know if it was a two-seam or what this pitch was, but it started on the outside part of the play, and it cut all the way in. But then in the fifth inning, everything went downhill. He was dominating and then he wasn't as he gave up three home runs in the fifth. But then again, the Mariners, I believe that they're very underrated. They're in the same conversation as the Red Sox. They're going to make some noise in 2021. And yeah, Bauer, he was... Uh 
He was their victim yesterday. I hyped up Gary Sanchez a little bit too much towards the beginning of spring training because ever since I last talked about him, he has gone one for 21 with zero walks and 10 strikeouts. This is coming from Talking Yanks over on Twitter. I really don't know what to make of this because again, people either say to care about spring training or to not care about it. So I'm still trying to get the consensus on whether or not it matters. And also Christian Pache has been struggling offensively as well, but at least defensively, he is going to be a wizard. The manager of the Braves came out and said that even if he sucks offensively, he is going to be playing in center field. So maybe that means they're going to move Okunia to right field and then put someone in left field. I don't know how exactly that's going to work because it seems like he is going to be their everyday center fielder. Now, a few other web gems I do want to bring up. We have Jorge Polanco of the Minnesota Twins with an insane grab, kind of in shallow right center field against Christian Pache, another defensive wizard. We have Johan Steven Rojas. I didn't even know he existed, but he made a pretty good web gem at the warning track against the Yankees. He left Aaron Judge speechless. And then Hunter Renfro of the Boston Red Sox, one of the more underrated defenders in all of baseball if we're talking about about outfielders. He threw a dart yesterday. He showed off the cannon yet again. I expect him to have a bounce back 2021, hopefully, because if he can do that combined with Michael Chavis breaking out and Christian Arroyo, and you have Jonathan, that second baseman, and Bobby Dahlbeck, I like the Red Sox. They're going to be fun. You have Xander Bogarts and JD Martinez, and also, what's his name? Christian Vasquez? Yeah, the Red Sox could be sneaky. All right, guys, here we go. I'm about to get a little bit fiery because I can't stand the mindset of when people say, well, back in my day, I understand and I respect your viewpoint. However, growing the game of baseball is not going to be by hitters pitching because Zach Gallen suffered an injury while hitting and now he might miss opening day. He is a record-setting pitcher. He's young. He is going to be the face of the Diamondbacks for the next decade, I feel like. And because he suffered an injury while hitting, we're not going to see him throw anytime soon. He has soreness in his right lateral forearm. He had to have a CT scan. He had to go through an MRI. Just a lot of bad things happening and all because we don't want to adopt the universal DH. I have to sneeze. <coughs> See? I'm allergic to BS. We should just get rid of pitchers hitting because that's BS. Now the flip side of the argument is that this is how baseball has always been and we've seen pitchers come out and say that they want to keep on hitting. Players like Michael Lorenzen who is a true two-way player. I mean he can play the outfield. He can hit. He can throw. Of course he's going to want to stay hitting but for the most part Part. I don't think the Diamondbacks are going to miss out on Zach Gallen's negative 44 career OPS plus. I mean, seriously, what are we talking about right now? We get the occasional Bartolo Cologne home run. We get the occasional sacrifice bunt to the right side, and that moves the runner over. But in my opinion, I would rather see Marcelo Zuna being a DH than watching Mike Soroka hit after coming off an Achilles injury because he's going to hit a ground ball to shallow shortstop. He's going to try and book it out, and he might re-aggravate that Achilles injury. I just don't like that. So please, for the love of all that is good in life, Please, baseball gods, get into Robert Manfred's head and convince him to make the Universal DH a thing because the owners don't want it while the players do. I would say that the players know a little bit more about the game of baseball and the trajectory of its future as opposed to the owners who only care about that moolah. So if you're interested in that debate, please let me know in the comment section down below. But the fact that Zach Gallen is now on the shelf because of a hitting injury it's just pointless to me at this point. It's boring baseball. That's just my opinion. I know it's going to cause a lot of controversy in the in the social medias of the world, but I'm just sick of it. And for the most part, a lot of people on Twitter that were convinced that it was the right way to play baseball, after this Zach Gallon injury, a lot of people are saying, you know what? Maybe it is time. Everything's changing in 2021. Maybe it's time to let go of the past, even though we're nostalgic about it. Another young pitcher that has a very high ceiling. Now, this is not injury related, but I wanted to talk about him. Jesus Lazardo over the last few years easily is one of the more hyped up prospects in all of baseball. Yesterday he had three strikeouts and four and two thirds scoreless innings. Now another young ace pitcher that I want to bring up is AJ Puck because he used to look like this and he finally cut his hair. I'm not saying finally as if he looked ugly, but he does look a whole lot younger. He's 25 years old. He has been suffering a few command issues to start spring training, but what happened to Jacob deGrom as soon as he cut that long hair, he got better. So imagine if Jesus Lazardo and AJ Puck can actually be healthy and amount to what they're supposed to talent-wise. The ace could be really good too. We have a few switch hitters going yard. We have Dylan Carlson with a mammoth, a moonshot home run, and then Ian Happ following that up with the home run of his own. So I guess I really have to ask you guys, who do you think is the best switch hitter in baseball going into 2021? Is it Francisco Lindor? Is it Jose Ramirez? Do we think that Ian Happ or Dylan Carlson are going to be able to take that 
Crown, and I'm trying to think of any other switch hitters. But I feel like J-Ram and Lindor are the biggest, and then you have Wander Franco coming up. Yo, I wish I could switch hit. And the last but not least, we have a few home runs from the White Sox. We have Eloy Jimenez and Tim Anderson taking lift off, and then Tommy Pham having two home runs in a single game. That pretty much does it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. To end today's video, I do want to say my heart goes out to everyone who is from Colorado or the surrounding areas. Being from Las Vegas, back what happened on October 1 with the uh, the tragedy, I really think that you have to have empathy in the situation. If not, sympathy is definitely a must. But my heart goes out to you. Things will get better with time. I promise you that. I used to think about it every single day, but now... Uh, maybe maybe once a week or once a month or something like that if I pass the Mandalay Bay. But thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow for yet another recap.